What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Kessel Run Radio, the fastest Star Wars show in the galaxy. My name is Noah Outlaw. I'm your host, as always, and thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. I'm here, as always, with Corey Van Dyke. What's up, man? What's up, dude? Yeah, how you doing? You feeling we don't good? have to re-record this, and so that's well. That's nice. Let me not jinx myself. Yeah, right. Don't say that yet. Yeah. Uh, and we also have two special guests today: Alex and Molly Damon from Star Wars Explained. What's up, guys? Hey. Hi. How are you two doing? Pretty good, you know. Dude, it's, living that uh, COVID quarantine right. crazy 2020 life, you know. Living that yeah. quarantine life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But well, uh, we, we have some news to talk about. Yeah. More, more, uh, rumors basically at this point because as everybody yeah. knows lucasfilm reveals stuff every like seven months on a random monday <laughs> so right. this is uh yeah what's you know, with star wars celebration not happening i i expect to yeah. get a little more you know in the little like it'll be spread out so hopefully we'll mm-hmm. get more but uh but we do have a fun show today we've we got a lot of stuff to talk about um with uh, I don't know, let's just get to the first topic. Hayden Christensen is apparently going to appear in the Kenobi series, uh, according to Latino Review, which is you know Latino Review isn't um, they have a good track record. You know they've they've been right about a lot of stuff, so this isn't something to take lightly. And also, me and Corey made a video, oh excuse me, a video about it, and uh, it's happening. Like we've heard that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, let's have Alex and Molly. What do you think about this when you hear this? Because obviously, I think we can all get a little excited. But are you a little nervous? And like, what do you think his role is going to be in the series? Well, this is a going to be interesting because we very rarely talk rumor speculation <laughs> stuff. So like, we're going to hear a bunch of stuff that is probably news to us. Right. I, I had heard this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like this. This makes sense to me. It excites me. Uh, I, I think so. There's a lot of different options. Be they like flashbacks or visions or uh something along those lines that that's kind of what i see hayden doing yeah i'm super excited i hope this is true um just being able to see hayden christensen in star wars again is is really exciting to me one of our one of our patrons recently asked so so we know that obi-wan and learns at some point how to become one with the force and retain his consciousness like qui-gon and yoda so they were like, do you think we'll ever see Obi-Wan go through what Yoda went through in the Clone Wars? And I'm like, probably not literally that, but it would be interesting if he yeah. had some sort of spirit journey and he had right. to confront his old failures. And like, maybe he sees a vision of Anakin and he yeah. has to reconcile some of that stuff. Right. Yeah, I think the the interesting thing that we've heard um, was, and this has been going around well before we had heard it too, is that they're going to flash back to the Clone Wars, which I think is a really good idea because I feel like a lot of new people are coming into the Clone Wars now with it being on Disney Plus, but there's still a lot of people who don't know about the show and its impact on the overall story. So I think, you know, showing Hayden and Ewan in that Clone Wars armor is the Mm -hmm. perfect way to start integrating that into the mainstream fandom, if you will. Um, So that's exciting. And I think that, uh, you know, will it be reused scenes from the Clone Wars? Like, that's my biggest question is, are we going to see things we've already seen and they're just going to recreate it or are they just going to do a new story? Um, I can't imagine these flashbacks are going to be longer than, you know, a, a couple minutes tops. Right. But um, what do you guys think about that, about seeing the Clone Wars in live action? Oh, I want to see them in that armor uh, for sure. Yeah, live action. <laughs> in Battlefront yeah. 2 when they put those skins oh. out. Like, yeah. just that alone, was like seeing Hayden Christensen's head on that armor even yeah. as a computer it was very cool yeah. um yeah that that's the question will it be something new or will it go over covered ground i i think that's fine to show something in live action that maybe people haven't seen before right because i think it would almost be weird if we saw like some new big revelation from the clone wars yeah exactly yeah. that was like well <laughs> like when that happens like yeah. seen that yeah. right 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 yeah yeah, with all the stuff with like, you know, Rosario Dawson coming to play live action Ahsoka and there's rumors of a live action Ahsoka Tano series, like I think it'd be really cool seeing, I think we have, there's a great chance we'll see, you know, obviously Hayden in the Clone Wars armor and Obi-Wan in, in the Clone Wars armor, but also Ahsoka live action running around. I think, and just seeing that just like blows my mind to even think about. So I really am excited to see what they do, you know, with the series and Hayden coming back yeah. to Star Wars is something that I think everybody, you know, 
I think everybody wants to see. Even the people who were like didn't really enjoy the prequels and thought Hayden wasn't the best pick for Anakin, I think they'd still be interested to see him come back. So I'm 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 insanely excited to see him come back. Um, but the main question I have for this series, and I think a lot of people are wondering the same thing, and I'll go to Alex and Molly. You think Obi Wan is going to stay on Tatooine throughout the entire series, or do you think he's going to leave? Uh, well, we've talked about this yeah. before. My opinion is that he should stay on Tatooine uh, unless there's a very, there has to just be a very good reason for him to leave. Because like at this point in time, mm-hmm. his one purpose is to protect Luke. So I, they can absolutely figure out a way to pull him off. Uh, we, we've thrown around the idea of like, maybe an Inquisitor comes, mm-hmm. sees right. Luke and heads off to report and Obi-Wan now has to go chase them down. They're, oh, that's cool. That uh, is a cool theory. Like, there, there's also the idea that he learns Anakin survived and is now Darth Vader. And I, I guess he could go... Something I've heard thrown around is, like, there's a line in Return of the Jedi where Vader tells Luke, oh, we won once thought as you did. That, yeah. like, I could still come back. So <laughs> there is room for them to have another confrontation, oh. I think. Yeah. Um, but I don't know why, still, that is not enough reason for me for, for him to leave Luke. Right. Yeah, it's it's hard to think like how to make this show interesting, but have everything happen on Tatooine. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I kind of like the idea that he has to leave for mm-hmm. something really big, whether it be an Inquisitor or you know he finds out that Anakin is alive and is Vader, and he's like, you know what, I'm gonna try one more time. It, it will <laughs> right. be something that I'm willing to drop immediately. If, if he's like, okay, I'm leaving, I'll be like, well, that's not maybe my first choice, but that's the story. Right, exactly. Right. Well, and I think uh, it's interesting too that Vader, there's rumors uh, going around that Vader's going to be in it too. And I think that that's, as you said, uh, you know, I kind of, I think the biggest thing they're going to show with, with Obi-Wan is him just going through this PTSD I think that's mm-hmm. that's the most likely scenario of how we're going to see Anakin come into play a lot more. Yeah. Um, I know the rumor was that he was a recurring role, um, or no, I think a main role, right? Like a, like a yeah. series regular. Tina Review said he's going to be a main, has to have like yeah. a, a prominent role. So. See, because what we heard was that he would be in it occasionally, like it's just a cameo appearance I here mean, and like, there. Cara Dune is a main character of The Mandalorian, and right. he's yeah. only in three only episodes. In right, yeah, that's <laughs> right. true, that's true. Yeah, well, I think circling back to the Clone Wars armor, this came out yesterday. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, interesting that, that Hot Toys is making Anakin and Obi Wan mm-hmm. uh, in their clone armor with so, Ewan and Hayden's head sculpts, which I think is interesting. Um, now, I've long speculated that toys have something to do with future releases, and that never pans out. So I'm not even going <laughs> to say that that's something that could happen. But, right. you know, seeing that was cool because, like, Battlefront, you're actually seeing how that could translate in uh, realistic form um but yeah, yeah i think seeing vader and obi-wan i think that being again would be really interesting uh, yeah i think that would be so cool to see that and, yeah. and you know alex mentioned the line that like you know obi-wan once thought as you did which we i guess we've seen it a, a little bit like in revenge of the sith yeah. like at the very beginning of their conversation on mustafar he's like he's like dude come on but then like after that it's like <laughs> But it's, it has, lasts for like 30 seconds. And he's like, okay, well, I'm going to kill you. Now I have to, yeah. what I have to do. So, yeah. like, I think it would be really cool to have. Yeah. And also, one thing about Vader, and, like, maybe this is just the character of Vader, but, like, there hasn't been very many, like, character moments. There is in Return of the Jedi. Like, there's, there's times he's talking to Luke where he's like, look, bro, I can't. Like, I, like, he, like you could, like, where you see a little bit, of, I, I guess Vader talks like some frat guy. Like, he's like, hey, dude. Like, <laughs> dude, bro, sorry, I can't. Like, my master is like a real dick, dude. I can't. But, like, um, no, but, like, I think it would be cool to have a scene with Ewan or Obi-Wan and Vader maybe just, like, talking about, like, hey, man, like, I know we used to be cool, but, like, I'm, this is just me now, and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, and we like, see I, a lot of uh, Vader's, like, more personal moments in the comics. It would be really nice to see that or, play out in live action. Or Rebels with Ahsoka. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. that, that's, that's what I was thinking as well. Um, that, that, that scene where, she, where he's talking to Ahsoka, um, 
and like his mask is broken and you kind of hear Matt Lanter's Anakin come through a little bit. It's really cool, but I would yeah. love more like that. And, and I just wish, you know, it would make a scene like that would make a new hope scene where they see each other again, like even better, you know, and it would make it, it would make it, it would make it feel more, I don't know, more powerful, I guess. So I don't know. I'd love to see it. I hope Vader shows up. I know people like, you know, Alex, like, I know you say you might not want him to leave, but also Molly mentioned like, there's nothing on Tatooine. There's nothing. There's a reason no one goes to Tatooine. Like, you know what I mean? So if they stick on Tatooine the entire time, it'll be interesting. But I'm, I'm wondering what they're going to do to make it, you know, entertaining. Mm-hmm. Flashback to the Clone Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, doesn't Vader mention Obi-Wan in Rebels to, to Palpatine? He just, it's, a, it's a real quick, like, even Kenobi or something where they're talking about finding other Jedi. And and Palpatine's oh, yeah. like if he still lives, so yeah, there is you a could scene in Rebels like that. you could say that maybe yeah if what if like Obi Wan faked his death or something around Vader and and you know but Vader's not stupid so obviously right. he's still on the hunt but it's clear that Obi Wan is always on his mind you know the fact that he mm-hmm. even drops that line in Rebels yeah. is saying that he's still actively searching for him. Do you know what season that is, Corey? Yeah, that's um. Season two, Siege of the Fall, at the end of that uh, two-parter. Okay. That would be interesting. Like, that That feels like the germ of an idea of why Obi-Wan would leave. Like, maybe right. he, maybe someone shows up looking for him, and he's like, oh, I need to really make people think I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I think, you know, I'm... The Kenobi series, I can't wait for. I think we're all on board. Like, just see, like, I don't care what they do. It could be you and sitting in his house meditating the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, fine with that. You know what I mean? Like, seeing Obi Wan, seeing you and back as Obi Wan is going to be amazing. So, uh, and also with Deborah Chow directing, oh, yeah. she, what well, she mm-hmm. did with The Mandalorian, her Mandalorian episodes, she did three and seven, I believe. And those were just two of my favorite episodes of season one. Yeah. Um, especially three. I mean, that. Oh my gosh, that that final scene where they're all surrounding Mandalor- Mando and the Mandalorians come up. It, it's, it's just some of the best Star Wars. Um, so I have, my hopes are high and I feel like no matter what they do, you know, they'll make, they'll find a way to make it, you know, interesting and yeah. fun. But also I feel like this series is going to be not fun. You know, it's not going to be Star <laughs> Wars fun. It's going to be, you know, <laughs> Obi-Wan dealing serious with serious undertone. Exactly. Yeah. It's me Obi-Wan dealing with his past and and thinking about how he failed Anakin and waiting on Luke to, you know, grow up, I guess. So um it's uh there's a lot of stuff that can happen in the show and I'm I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Um you know, with COVID and and this crazy 2020 we're living in, you know, productions have had to shut down as of lately productions have kind of got back uh, going. Uh, I know Jurassic World has been shooting. There's just straight out like Jeff Goldblum was talking about it and he's like, "No, yeah, we everyone gets tested every day. There's few crew members and oh. we're shooting it." I thought yeah. they shut down. No, they did for a day. I guess. No, I got, day. Someone okay. someone got COVID and they were like, "All right, wrap it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow oh, okay. at 9 a.m." Okay. But um, just spray everything down. Exactly. Oh my just God. wipe down wipe down the dinosaurs and then we're back at it. <laughs> Uh, but you can't get the t-rex sick <laughs> no 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 <laughs> uh, but uh, i believe bestman bulletin who was a friend of the show and a very reliable guy was reporting that Ka- the cassie and andor series goes back into pre-production later this month actually i think the beginning of next week and are planning to continue shooting because they already shot a little bit in uh, in the fall at, at pinewood studios and kenobi starts shooting at pinewood in january so uh, let me ask, like, when do you, when do you think these shows, cause Cassian was supposed to come out in 2021, Alex and Molly, do you guys think that's going to be the case? Do you think there's any way Cassian is able to come out in 2021? If, if they're doing pre-production now, I'd be, unless it's really late, uh, which it could be, but I, I'm, I'm skeptical at this point. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it'll be probably pushed, which is a bummer, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you too. Like, I, I think if they could, it, you know, it, maybe if they're shooting it like they do the Mandalorian, Mandalorian, that turnaround time is quick. Like, yeah, that's true. So if they're using that technology where they, like we saw in Disney Gallery, the where volume. they, 
like the mm-hmm. what John Favreau talked about, like every five seconds on that show is like the mm-hmm. video game engine that we're using. I use it on Jungle Book and also Lion King and all. <laughs> you know, and like, so if they're using that, which it seems like they love that technology, so I don't see yeah. why they wouldn't. They're going to use it on Kenobi, so. They, oh, that's right. And so I guess we haven't heard if they're using it on Cassian. Maybe Cassian is more like location. Nah, they'll use it. They'll use it. There's yeah, no I, way. I have to yeah. imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean, yeah. that's kind of weird if they were like, yeah, we can imagine any type of, uh, like, we could just put up anything we want, but now let's go to the woods. Let's go to the real woods. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, right. So, yeah, I mean, but so with that turnaround time, I think it's it's possible. Corey, do you think we're going to, is any chance we get Cassian in 2021? No, I don't think so. And I think the same goes for Kenobi, obviously, since it's in January. I think the same goes for Mandalorian Season 3. I, I, I really do believe that next year is going to be a big animation year. I think the reason the Rebel sequel was pushed was specifically because of all these delays. I mean, if you yeah. can't get live action out, you're going to want to put you know what you have ready next year because you got Mandalorian Season 2 for the rest of this year starting in October. Um, so you don't really need to put the Rebel sequel out right now if you can just push that to next fall where you got the Bad Batch in the first half and the Rebel sequel in the second half. So there's at least content coming out. Right. Um, in the event that Cassian does get delayed. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, they're starting pretty late in the game right now uh, for Cassian. Right. Um, right. But I could, I could see it, like, just making it. Yeah. Like, maybe, and- like, a December release. Mm. Yeah, that, it, it would be so late. It would be, it would it would come out late December if it does come out in twenty twenty one for yeah. sure. Um, and I, and Kenobi is going to shoot in January, so you know that then that was supposed to be released in twenty twenty two. So I feel like that's yeah. still on track for a twenty two twenty. So that means in in twenty twenty two we'll be getting the Cassian Andor series and Kenobi, and apparently the, apparently there's a live action movie coming out that year. Yeah, yeah. Cool release, we'll see. which we'll see. We've heard nothing about. Shout out to Lucasfilm for that. Like we have no, and 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 I can't imagine that one, guys. Alex Molly, do y'all think that twenty twenty two movie is even going to happen at this point? Uh, I I guess I don't see why not. I mean, well, it, it all depends on you know what happens the rest of this year and right. next year. Like, yeah, but, it yeah. depends on how much of it they've figured out and like the filming and everything. Which, I I don't know. We have a friend in the industry here in atlanta and he mm-hmm. was talking about like all the stuff that they're gonna have to go through like yeah. basically testing whole film crews yeah every, every day. day stuck in a hotel like yeah. can't leave it's just they're all sequestered together and it's, it's insane yeah wow. yeah the reason but the, the reason i ask and and is because you know see, for rogue one like we know nothing about the 2022 movie uh, and i and and we don't know who the director is. We don't know who's writing it. We don't know the release date. We know it's coming out that year. We don't know the release date. We have no de- like details on the movie. But like yeah. for Rogue One, I feel like two years before, we knew it was about the rebels stealing the plants to, to, the, to yeah. the Death Star. We knew Gareth Evans or Ga- Gareth Edwards. Was it Gareth Edwards, mm-hmm. right? Edwards. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Gareth Evans. Gareth Edwards was uh, directing. And, and it was like we had information. And they, yeah. we, they haven't told us anything. And so I think maybe they were just playing it safe with COVID. Maybe, like, maybe they were like, we're not going to promise anything. We're not going to get them excited for something that might not come out. So, Corey, like, you think that that movie is going to actually happen in 2022 at least? I mean, since they're shooting Jurassic World, like, it's definitely possible. Um, I feel like we're going to need to know what it's about very soon, though, because if it starts going to pre production soon, I mean, they'd have to go into pre-production, what, early next year to, to make that 2022 date? What, or would they have is, to be doing it now? They'd have to be going now. They'd have to be. Yeah, right. They, maybe not like like Creature Shop and like all those stuff. Right, but like at least story physical, and like, like actors. Storyboarding and, and stuff, which maybe yeah. they are, but, but we just know nothing about it. And they're being really secretive about it. So hmm. I don't you know. I think we would have probably heard something. I was at least hopeful that in august at celebration they were going yeah. to be like here's something mm-hmm. yeah i think so yeah i definitely think that would have been where we got the news for that which so hopefully the, still yeah well yeah. hopefully but if we don't hear anything by the end of august or maybe i'll give them like september there's that it's not happening yeah there's no way yeah we would hear something yeah. by then but i think it's uh weird that they're not doing any virtual 
you know, like, I mean, DC is doing like this virtual thing. I think Marvel's going to do one soon. Comic San Diego is doing home. stuff this week. Yeah. It's weird that like, we can't just have one dedicated day for Star Wars news where it's like, here's what's coming. This is what we're doing just to let everyone know, but it's, it's I, just nothing. I think that's just one of the, you, I, you just reminded, I think that's a, one of the biggest missed opportunities that, and, yeah. and, and, and I'm not gonna lie, Lucasfilm, they're all about their missed opportunities right now. Uh, <laughs> Missed opportunity, not having Caden Christensen in The Rise of Skywalker. So the biggest missed opportunity in the Star Wars franchise, in my opinion. But here's the thing, like, you know how cool it would have been if they just did Zoom calls, right? With, like, the Mandalorian Season 2 cast. Yeah. John Favreau was there. And, yeah. and they did a one for Kenobi. And they did something cool where, like, Hayden was in the waiting room on Zoom. And they were like, hey, we have one more surprise for you. Yeah. Just like yeah. if they're doing it at Celebration. Yeah. But instead of walking out on stage, their box appears. And everyone's like, what? You know, what's going on? And like, it would be so cool. And I, the fact that they're not doing that blows my mind. But that's just a rant for me. I, it's just, <laughs> it was, It'll now, be interesting with the the next celebration in 2022. Like, yeah. maybe they're saving a bunch of stuff. <laughs> For yeah. that celebration, I don't want yeah. them to save it. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite yeah. a bit of that's a long exactly. time. We want away. it now. We want it now. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, they're and, gonna and, be like at that celebration, they're like the bad batch season one. And everyone's gonna be like, Well, that's been out for a year, so yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. They're just gonna sit everyone in the stadium and lock the doors and be like, All right, 24 hours of right. just like <laughs> huge Star Wars news dump. <laughs> hey, I'll be there for that, honestly. honestly. Yeah, I'm yeah. Down. Let's do it. Let's I'm do down. It. Um, now, like, before we move on to the next topic, I think I know everyone's answer to this. But Alex, Molly, which show are you more excited for, Kenobi or Cassian? That's honestly kind of tough for me. I mean, Kenobi is just the thing that every fan has been like, right. oh, we're doing more Star Wars, like, get Ewan back. So uh, th- there is, it's Kenobi, that's my answer. But Cassian <laughs> still has this element of the unknown right. to me where I'm like, oh, this could be anything. So that's still very intriguing. Yeah, uh, I think my answer is actually the Cassian show, just because I know it'll be with K2SO involved, it'll <laughs> at least have some more lighthearted stuff right. and, and a lot of humor. So, and I'm a huge Rogue One fan, so all that stuff is very exciting to me, but I'm very excited for both. Yeah, me too. Corey? Uh, it's Kenobi. I mean, just like <laughs> hearing that Hayden's coming back. Dude, I mean, and, and the thing is, I'm still just excited to see Ewan back. That's still, like, it still feels surreal that that's even happening, you know, because yeah. I just, like, I know that everyone was always asking for it, and I just didn't think that they'd actually do it. So the fact that it's it's still happening, and Ewan talks so highly of it, it's weird to see interviews with Ewan now where he's like, yeah, it's happening, this is what we're doing, I'm excited, <laughs> rather than, oh, I don't know. You know? Yeah, right. It'd be funny um, if he kept doing that. Yeah. Oh, that would I have no be clue. hilarious. <laughs> Right. Well, we know he's awesome. working on his beard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, big time. Big time. Beard, beard watch, yep. man. Beard watch. Remember beard watch for Mark Hamill? Like before, like Force <laughs> Awakens. Oh, yeah, like, anytime yes. he was seeing, they're like, how's that beard looking? Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I, I, so me, it's, for, for me, it's Kenobi. But here's my thing with Cassian. I've, I've said it many times on the show, but like when, when they were like, all right, we're making a Cassian Andor series. I was like, uh, oh, okay, sure, I guess. But now, and the more I think about it, there's just a yeah. lot of possibilities for that show. Now, look, I love K2SO and I love Cassian, so seeing them is going to be cool. But if the show is just them going, it's like, oh, you know, first episode they get their mission, and the last episode is them completing the mission. I don't know if I'm going to be, like, super excited for that. But if, if, if every episode is kind of like, maybe they can be on one mission, but they have to go to a bunch of different places, and I think it... And I, I hope that they'll show us like characters that we know that are like up across the galaxy that we like, you know, that we don't really know what they're doing in this time. Like they mm-hmm. can bump into some famous bounty hunter, like, or maybe Cad Bane could show up in, a, in, a, in an episode or, you know, like, a, but there's, there's a bunch of opportunities and like maybe Ahsoka will show up, which, you know, they love putting Ahsoka in absolutely every property ever. <laughs> so I think that's a strong possibility. Um, and so I just, I'm excited. Awesome. I'm excited. Like really excited because it's Star Wars, but I just hope that they, I hope they do you know something a little more interesting than these rebels are going on a mission. Like we've seen mm-hmm. it, we've yeah. seen it in Rogue One. You know what I mean? It's like and I love Rogue One, and I'm always down for more stories like that. But I hope they give us something a little different, something we haven't really seen before. 
Um, I think which, it'd be cool if we ran into the Cloud Rider gang. Mm-hmm. And that's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Infus sure. Nest. I, yeah, I, I don't see why not. You no, know, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if, if Infus Nest showed up. And, you know, somebody asked her on Instagram. Uh, we talked about this a few weeks ago, but somebody, excuse me, someone asked her on Instagram. They were like, hey, are you in the Cassie Andor series? And she, she responded, hey, no spoilers. I can't talk about that. <laughs> so it's like, why can't you? T- why? Why not? Like, if someone told you not to talk about it, because if someone told you not to talk about it, then obviously you're in the show. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I would love that because Infus. I, you know, I want Infus to have her own series. I think like a Cloud Rider gang with Infus Nest. And isn't she, Corey? You told me she got cast in one of the Marvel shows, right? Yeah, um, the Winter Soldier, uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier show. Oh, yeah. really? Falcon, the Winter Soldier. Nice. Yeah. So I, I, Aaron Kellyman is, is awesome. And I'm so happy yeah. that she was at Celebration. It seemed like she had a great time at Celebration. So that was awesome. Yeah. So I'd love yeah, to yeah. see her in, in more Star Wars. So um, yeah, fingers crossed that she shows up and then a bunch of other cool characters. Well, also, I feel like with Star Wars Rebels being as popular as it is, I would assume we're going to see some live action Rebels characters in Cassian. Wait, when does it take place? Uh, I- they said like, the early days of the rebellion. Early, okay. I thought I but, thought it was I like mean, six. I, for some reason, I want to say it was six years before A New Hope, but maybe okay. that's maybe that's the Kenobi series. So mm-hmm. I don't know. So probably not then. But like the this, early days of the rebellion, quote unquote, could mean a lot because yeah. like, technically <laughs> yeah. the Rebel Alliance didn't actually form until Rogue One. So right, it right. could be a year. It could be six. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think where it's going to feel different is Cassian has that line about how like we've all done terrible things right. for mm-hmm. the rebellion and we need it to matter. Uh, so I, I don't think it, it's going to be, it'll have some lighthearted stuff with K2, but I think it's also going to be a lot of Cassian like shooting Tivik in the back and right. doing yeah. some not so honorable things in the name of the rebellion. Right. I think that would be a uh, key too, is, is making some of these shows have a dark element to it i mean mandalorian was kind of our first example of certain episodes being a lot darker than things we've seen before uh some brutal stuff happens in that series so i think yeah putting a serious tone to cassian and kenobi while also have having light-hearted moments is good for their characters and good to sort of show i think the the casualties of war right and especially in cassian's case seeing him do things that just aren't great that's what I loved about Rogue One was seeing the the rebels not you know be as as lighthearted as they usually are. They're they're more gritty. They do things that aren't right, um, and I think that that would be cool to see in the series for sure. Personally, I, I hope we just get to see six year old Cassian running around. <laughs> you know, he's been in this fight since he was six years old. Let's just right. see him and just get a little K two right. Yeah. Like like as if K two grew up with them and they're just running around. <laughs> Dude, I'd be help. down for that, honestly. Let's do no, it. No, it's just a, the, the first episode is Cassian, and he's like, let me tell you a story. And it's just him, and then, that'd be great. And he's, like, sitting in a rocking chair by a fireplace. Oh, man, I'd love that. All right, let's move on, let's move on to the next topic. Um, John Boyega. Now, this, this, this topic's a little sad, a little, but it's also – he kind of clarified his comments, so I'll talk about yeah. that. But somebody asked him, because I saw it on his Instagram, uh, he posted some picture. And somebody commented and said, all I want is Finn with a green lightsaber 10 years after Rise of Skywalker or something. And he said, LOL, no thanks, I've moved on. And then, you know, and then a bunch of people, including myself, were like, what? Like, like, like uh, just, it's, you know, it's upsetting to hear John say that, you know, because especially as a fan of the sequel trilogy, I'm like, I would love to see, I haven't thought about you with the green lightsaber, but wouldn't that be like the best thing ever? So, and I was, so I was a little upset, but then he clarified, he was like, I don't mean anything bad. Like someone was like, LOL trash in Disney. And he was like, no, I don't mean anything bad by that. It's just like, I don't want to play that. I've already played that character. I'm ready to move on. So yeah. a lot of people ran with that as like, Oh, John Boyega hates Disney and hates star Wars, but he doesn't, he's just ready to move on to a new character, which I totally understand. I think all of them are, uh, every star Wars actor gets like that. So, um, Alex and Molly first, what do y'all like make of his comments? And then also do you think we'll ever see Finn? in live action again i would never say never uh (laughs) like and i'm totally fine with how long did he just spend playing finn like right seven eight years of his life yeah Yeah, it's time for him to go try something else like he's allowed to do whatever he wants and i don't Mm -hmm. think that's even remotely a bad thing yeah yeah 
and this being this coming from comments on instagram just screams like what yeah yeah just this is eh." but i mean yeah he's totally right in wanting to do other things and i would also like to see uh finn come back and you know be training with ray in some fashion as as a jedi but you know he might be a little bit burned from where his character arc went versus where he wanted it to go and right, right. might be just done with it. I mean, I, I think he would really enjoy playing the Jedi part. Like, I think he had, I, I remember his reaction to the Force Awakens trailer where he's like jumping over the couch because mm-hmm. like he ignites this lightsaber, <laughs> like knowing that he is now Force sensitive and could be trained as a Jedi. Like, I think he would probably have a ball doing that. So you know, maybe in another 10, 20 years, he would want to step back into the role. Mm -hmm. Right. Help lead the new Jedi Order or whatever. Or maybe that was just completely to throw everybody off. Yeah, maybe. Could be. (laughs) Episode 10 is is the 2022 movie. And he's just just (laughs) trying to throw us up. Yeah. Uh, Corey, what do you, what do you, whenever you hear John say this and and what do you think? And, And also, do you think we'll see him in live action? Yeah, I think to what Molly said about him probably not liking where the, the story went. I, I, I agree. There's been things that he said in interviews where I'm like, yeah, he, I don't think he liked exactly where it went. Um, you know, and, and I, that's totally understandable. Um, I do think that one day, as we say all the time, Noah, when, when Disney comes with the money, like hey, they'll be it's, back. It's that Brinks truck. They bring exactly. the Brinks truck to their front lawn and, yep. and they'll do anything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I think out of all the characters in the sequel trilogy, other than like Kylo and, and Ray Finn, Finn is up there for me. I think he's a very well-written character, especially in force awakens. And I was hoping to see uh, more of him in seven and nine or wait, no eight and nine. <laughs> wow. Um, but uh, at least more of a, of a main story. Um, and then, yeah, now that he's force sensitive, I don't see why not, you know, you could one day, do an animated series if he wanted to and he could yeah. voice finn um but uh yeah i mean i understand too like like alex was saying this is seven eight years of his life yeah. um you don't want to continuously do something for longer than that yeah i mean look at the mcu for example some of these actors do this stuff for like 12 years and then after <laughs> that they're like i'm done so <laughs> right i think people keep asking robert downey jr yeah. if he's coming back and he's like please no like yeah please. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly and you know I, I definitely think that John enjoyed his time with Star Wars and he, he always talks about that he's very appreciative of being a part of it. But yeah, at a certain point, it's, uh, it is what it is. And obviously we know that, that fans will fish for any comment to try right. to sp- do a negative spin on right. the Disney Star Wars stuff. Well, so that's not cr- surprising. What was crazy about the story and I was like, what? Like, I, mm-hmm. I saw the Instagram comment and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And but then I but he he made another comment and like I talked about like he was like no I'm just ready to like do other roles and stuff which I was like oh okay totally understand. But I saw and the reason I put in the, put it in the show notes is because I was on Twitter and Variety wrote an entire article about it. Variety, like, desperate for uh, news. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh, and so I that's why I was like I guess we could talk about it. And so yeah, and and here's the thing. Here's my thing with episode nine. They went out of their way to make that little storyline with Finn being force sensitive. I, I can't imagine why they would do that if they didn't have plans mm-hmm. to flesh that out more in the future. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it just seems like I like that. I, I love that. But it's kind of weird. Like, if, if they were just like, no, this is just going to be the end of his story, they wouldn't throw that in there. So mm-hmm. I, I think they were already kind of thinking of like a post Rise of Skywalker story with Rey training Finn. Maybe not in live action. I mean, I'm like I'm, I'm like ninety percent sure we'll see those characters in animation before we see them in live action again. Um, I think a, a post Rise of Skywalker uh, animated series is a given at this point, um, which I can't wait for because I just Ray is my favorite Star Wars character, so like I just I I just need more. And if like the day I see Daisy Ridley as Ray again in live action will be one of the best days of my life. So agreed. Yeah, I just for can't. Sure. I. <laughs> And I just can't wait to see all of them back. And I, I hope, I hope, and you know, Oscar Isaac's kind of said the same, same stuff about like, 
oh, if I, I'll do another Star Wars movie, movie if I need another house or whatever you said. <laughs> and like, and, and, but you know, and it's kind of a joke, but like, I just think they're all, but this happens with like every Star Wars actor, the original trilogy actors, Mark, there's a, there's this video clip I think about all the time of Mark Hamill. I guess they're interviewing him like on the set of Return of the Jedi. And he's like, yeah, it's bittersweet because like, I like these, I love these people. This has been fun, but it's sweet because I'm ready to move on and do other things. So it's like, it's, it, it, and it always happens. Natalie Portman, same thing. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like you and McGregor is like the one who's like, no, I'll do it again. Let's go. You know what I mean? <laughs> I had fun. So I just think it's a common thing. I don't think it's something to look into too much. Uh, but I, I, I really hope we see John uh, on screen again in live action. And I mean, point. like these, these characters, I, they mean a lot to the actors, but it's also, it's a job. Like right. they, they, don't treat them the same way we as fans do. Right. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think that's something where people will like get offended that they mm-hmm. want to do something else. Right, instead of, right. like, why wouldn't you want to be Finn forever? Finn? Right. <laughs> it makes right. me think of Attack the Block, which was a movie that we Great, <clears throat> both love so much. And I just, I, I need to see John Boyega in more cool roles totally, like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John just signed on for a movie, and I I forgot who was in it. I I'm, I'm mad at myself now, but the cast is is stacked. There's a bunch of people in it, and I'm oh, excited. Yeah. You know, you saw it, yeah, and, and he posted yeah. about it on like Instagram and stuff, and and I'm just excited to see John because John is a great actor. You just mentioned yeah. Attack the Block. Attack the Block is amazing, mm-hmm. uh, and he's also been talking about doing a sequel to that. He really wants to do another one, which I'm I'm all there for. Me too. But him, him, I genuinely think Oscar or not Oscar John could get nominated for an Oscar, maybe win an Oscar one day if he if he really really finds the right role and and, and goes goes hard. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see what he does in the future and and all the new cast for the sequel trilogy. They're all so talented, and I think they're all they all have a lot of potential. And I don't want Star Wars to hold them back. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, let's move on to the next topic. According to Bestman Bulletin, one more time, uh, he he heard that the next Star Wars films will be smaller scale uh, and more intimate, kind of due to the having to have a small crew, uh, you know, with COVID going on in the future. And also, it was kind of a thing that I guess Lucasfilm was like, let's just kind of step away from this. The galaxy's in trouble, like you know what I mean. Like let's do because the Mandalorian is one Thank that's God. A very small. I'm, yeah, I agree. The Mandalorian is a small story, but it's it's very compelling and it's fun and it's exciting. Um, so when y'all hear this, and you, in, uh, Alex and Molly, like when you hear this, do you kind of get excited for the possibilities of more smaller, you know, smaller stories and more intimate stories? Yeah, I mean, I think it allows them to take more risks uh, mm-hmm. story wise. Like if they're going with uh, smaller <laughs> smaller stories with smaller budgets uh they can just try weird things and do like one-off movies i'm kind of skeptical that they were planning this for the 2022 movie like i'm Mm -hmm. wondering if they are taking what they were going to do in 2022 and they pushed that off uh like uh, just throwing out something random if that were going to be like an old republic trilogy at the start of something and they're like okay we we need to wait until we can do this right right so we'll we'll push that back and we will bump up something that is, yeah, a, a smaller tale, but yeah. movie worthy. Would you consider Rogue One to be like a smaller ish scale movie? I, I would consider Solo to be so, yeah, like yeah. A more so, intimate. Yeah. yeah. Like, because, like you said, it's not a the galaxy is in trouble thing. Like, the, the climax of that fight is just in some bad guy's office. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Rogue One, I think, could there's there's times it feels like a more intimate, mm-hmm. smaller scale movie, but also that third act is like huge. a huge star, you know, like a huge you know Star Wars battle. So, uh, which yeah. is great, and I love that's that third act of Rogue One. This is totally beside the point. The third act of Rogue One <laughs> is like might be the best Star Wars ever. But well, I wonder yeah. if they could do anything with Mandalorian characters and put them on screen for a movie. You know, I mean, they could yeah. do like the backstory of Moff Gideon or something like <laughs> love that. that yeah i'd love yeah, that. I, i'd love that you know and uh moff gideon just i'm sorry i, I don't mean to interrupt, interrupt molly but moff gideon funny. is like I, i'm so interested in that guy like i cannot <laughs> wait to learn more about it but molly go ahead 
uh, I'm just, I'm totally down for a more intimate look into Star Wars characters, getting to know them a little bit more and getting like a, a more small scale story. I'm, yeah. I'm down for that. Mm-hmm. I, I will say that like, I would not be crazy about if they were like, we're doing a Moff Gideon story, like as a movie. Mm. I, I tend to be more like, give me something new. Like absolutely, right, right. I'm, I'm happy to learn his story in Mandalorian season two. Right. But if we're going to do a movie, like yeah. I, I don't want it to be brand new characters, brand new time. Like just just give me something off the wall that I've never seen before. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, it kind of leads us into the next question I had for, for everyone. It's like, what are some smaller scale stories that you'd like to be told in, in Star Wars? Uh, I want to see a Crimson Dawn story. Mm. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, us too. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, now I'm, I'm trying to think of something <laughs> weird and off the wall, which right. that's, I, well, you think about it. Actually, was <laughs> thinking about we were on uh, we we're on Steel Wars the other day with uh, Emily Lind, who had this like amazing. We were pitching like projects, and she had this amazing idea. It was like it takes place during the High Republic, and it's it's the 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 main characters are members of the N- Nile or N- Nahil or the whatever the pirates mm-hmm. are in the High Republic, and it just takes place on their ship. And it's just like <laughs> stuff they're doing. And I think that'd be such a like an interesting. It's it's we it, we won't wouldn't know any of those characters. It's in the High Republic, so it's four hundred years before any of the Star Wars movies. And I just thought it would be so. I I, I just loved that idea and kind of getting and they she's like and they go mess with the Jedi every now and then. And I'm like that just sounds <laughs> like the best thing ever. So that's kind of something that I think if they were gonna also I just really think they need to bring the the High Republic into the broader star wars world as in like tv series and movies i think if they don't do high republic movies or tv series i think that's a huge missed opportunity Mm -hmm. Uh, because i'm excited for them to delve into that you know that that part of the timeline but well okay so now that leads me into my off the wall idea this is something we've talked about before that could play into the high republic but i i think that this would be a really interesting film is to see what the sith were up to at that point in time Mm. yeah yeah uh, yes. during the Republic because they're not taking over the galaxy yet. They can't right. be out in the open like threatening the galaxy. Um, so what are they doing? It would be smaller and more intimate. How do they function? Uh, it, that would be two brand new Sith characters. Mm. Uh, or maybe Darth Plagueis could be the apprentice if he's very old by the oh, time yeah. he dies. Like, yeah. uh, something like that I think would be a smaller story that would still be very, very intriguing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would, just like the idea that the Nile just every once in a while decide to mess with the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I I would love a Darth Plagueis film or, or, or trilogy of films, if you will. I mean, just to see that book adapted mm-hmm. into a movie. I mean, they can change certain things, sure, but it's already such a perfect book that I would love to, and that's, it is kind of a, a smaller scale story too, because you're, it really, the, the book is driven, is very character driven, especially with Sidious and Plagueis. And I think it would be cool to see Sidious's backstory. I mean, even a Darth Bane movie would be cool to see how the rule of two yep. formed and those books are incredible as well. So and, and two and three of, out of those books are smaller scale. One is right. pretty big, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, two and three, I'd say more intimate. Yeah. Yeah, seeing uh, Bane and Xana on screen would be mind blowing. That would be so cool. So yeah, yeah I mean that, or maybe even like a Cad Bane movie. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> that'd be tough. Right. thinking. Yeah, right. right. Well, you know, and and who was Plagueis's master was Tenebris, right? Tenebris. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know how long uh, Plagueis is. What is he immune? Is that what they're called? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. yeah so I, it's not I'm not a nerd and it sucks, but um what's uh like what's their lifespan like? Do they live for a long time? Do y'all know? This is an Alex and Molly question for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't, but I'm sitting at a computer. So. Yeah, you can, if you want to <laughs> Google it, you can. Because the thing is, is like I'd love to see Plagueis show up uh in in a live action series because I was I was in that camp that like Supreme Leader Snoke could have been Plagueis. And honestly, if you if you replace Palpatine and with Plagueis and Rise of Skywalker, 
you know how cool that'd be because you know his, yeah because he, he he already was the guy who could cheat death and stuff like that so that would i don't awesome. know that would have been uh, cool the general public would have been very confused oh, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> uh mutants live for over 100 years old okay, oh, okay. so uh, so uh, i guess he wouldn't i guess i guess tech i guess he couldn't really be in the high republic right am i wrong uh, i mean we're also talking about legends information right. so like they right that's change true. It. he doesn't even have to be immune anymore that's true he can be something completely mm, different yeah, that's true I, i'm, I'm with you, you. I'd yeah be, i'd be sad <laughs> if they changed it but they don't have to stick with it it'd be some right. just like humanoid oh dude i, I would well, not be happy about that. they could keep him being immune but just change them like certain immune's lifespan yeah, to like they live 500. for 500 years yeah yeah, yeah. exactly exactly yeah. so um i would love that and and i'm just excited i'm pretty excited for the you know the idea of smaller scale star wars stories Mm-hmm. because you know solo i love i love solo i thought solo was so much fun and like you said it was in the it was in the bad guy's office the final <laughs> fight scene and there was nothing there was no i mean infus nest mentions the rebellion but there was no like the galaxy's in trouble you know there was like yeah we have to if we don't do this the whole entire galaxy is gonna die and blow up right it's like which is you know fun and that's star wars you know what i mean but i like the smaller scale story ideas so um i'm excited to see what they do with that uh, all right, let's move on to the next topic. Alden Ehrenreich's been talking about Solo, Star Wars story, quite a bit lately. He's been doing, mm-hmm. I guess he's promoting a show um, that he's doing. I think it's on Hulu. And obviously people are going to ask him about Solo. Uh, and somebody asked him just about the future of Star Wars. And he his comments are, they're figuring out what Star Wars looks like in our world today. In all ways with media landscape, everything's so different with the streaming services and everything. So we'll see what comes of it. So this kind of sounds to me like he's been talking to Lucasfilm. Like he's been, he's, it, like if he, maybe he's just has friends at Lucasfilm and they're telling him this, but uh, when you hear these comments, do you think Alden is, you know, Alex Molly, do you think Alden is kind of in talks to reprise his role as Han Solo in the future? I mean, it's, it's one of those, I I think there's another quote where he's like, oh, like, I haven't heard anything. He does like the old Ewan McGregor, which we know it it can be either way, (laughs) obviously. But yeah, it it is weird, that quote saying they're figuring out what Star Wars looks like in our world today. Yeah. Like that seems, it's not like a, I imagine this is what they're doing. Yeah. It's like, right. It does sound like they told him that. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Ever since we saw Solo and then, you know, the whole Make Solo 2 Happen movement, um, I always thought, you know, they could absolutely continue this story, but maybe make it a Disney Plus series or movie, like exclusive movie Mm -hmm. for Disney Plus, not a theatrically released type deal. Right. Yeah, I mean, I would love, and Corey, I'll get your thoughts in a, in a just a second, but I, I would love a series with Alden back as Han because I thought he was great. I thought he was good. You know, there was, going into it, there's a lot of rumors about how he was bad and they had to have an acting coach and he was saved in the edit, blah, 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 all this stuff. But I think if they could do it that, then they could do it again. And I loved what he did in Solo. So uh, I think it'd be great, a series about him and Han or him and Chewie, I should say, and Kira and Maul, and get you know you know Ray Park's always down to play Maul. Like oh, he's yeah. just <laughs> waiting, and, he, and and I feel like Amelia would come back to do it, and and if she if they asked, and and I know I, and Alden said he's down, and you know get Eunice get get his tall tall ass in a, in a Chewie suit, and it'll be a good time. You know what I mean? So I really hope they I really hope that we see him again as Han, and also mm-hmm. I love that story that they set up at the end of Solo with Maul. Uh, in Crimson yeah. Dawn, and they're going to Jabba's palace. I'm pretty sure they say a really big gangster. I think it's a play on words. So I think I don't know. I think it'd be. I think there's a lot of potential. But Corey, what do you think? You think we're gonna see Alden as Han again? Yeah, I think so. I think it's inevitable. I mean, you know, they certainly set things up at the end of Solo. I mean, yeah, I guess you could say that they don't necessarily have to, but. The reception to his care to him playing Han was very well received. I think, yeah. Yeah, even though the film didn't do well financially, it's still. Well, and I, I'll say this: the film didn't do financially well just because they had to shoot it twice. I feel like if yeah. they didn't have to shoot it twice, it, it still would have because all the MCU films that are like 
like Ant-Man and like the first Captain America, they all made the same amount of money. It's because they're not event films. So it made sense to me when Solo made the amount that it did, which I still think should have been more, but it's clear that it was because they shot it twice. And the so marketing I, oh, for it was kind of terrible. Don't, don't oh. get me started on the marketing. <laughs> I will go off for 20 minutes about how they didn't put a trailer out till three months yeah. before the movie. Anyway, it, uh, let's, let's it just move on. It did get us to go to Denny's once, though. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I, yeah, same, same. <laughs> same. <laughs> Denny's had a big year. They no did, trailer, but go to Denny's. You know, go get some breakfast. You know, I think the the weirdest moment I've had in, in the Star Wars community has to be when Denny sent me an email and they were like, hey, because I was living in California at the time. They're like, we're having this event at the, um, well, the theater. I'm, I'm blanking. Fam- big theater in, in California. The Chinese theater? The no, no, the other yeah. one. Um, maybe it I, is a I Chinese I remember theater. a bunch of our friends going to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah so it was that. And. I remember going there and being so confused <laughs> because I was like, why is this a Denny's event? And uh, <laughs> they were like, you better be prepared because some special guests are going to be here for you guys to interview. And I'm like, Alden Ehrenreich's going to be here. Like Donald Glover's going to be here. I'm getting ready with questions and whatnot. And so we get there and uh, out, out walks the Denny CEO. <laughs> It's <laughs> the Denny CEO. I'm like, I have no questions ready. <laughs> and, uh, and then they had us go. What are you going to ask? What are you going to do? You should hey, ask him the same d- questions. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> how did you to- prepare to play as Han Solo? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get into and, breakfast, bro? <laughs> yeah. So they showed us the commercial for it and they showed us the trailer. And then the curtains on the stage open up. And it's just a bunch of like, it's just like a dining area all of a sudden on the stage. So we go there, we're eating. I must have said the most disrespectful thing on accident to the Denny CEO because he walks, <laughs> he walks up to me and like, like I don't, I'm eating the, the pancakes and he's like, so what do you think? I didn't know he was the CEO. I was like, yeah, they're okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um could have been worse yeah, could have yeah. Yeah. Oh, been yeah. like this is absolute garbage can you believe they <laughs> right. can you believe they serve this to human beings and he's right. like oh for sure thank you <laughs> <laughs> well and then and then he gave me like another dish and i just didn't even eat it and it was purely because it had like strawberries on it and i'm allergic to them so that's why but he doesn't know oh, and man. so he's like walking away and somebody says to me that's the ceo of denny's <laughs> That's an amazing. That's, so that's amazing. my solo Denny's experience. Well, that's their marketing. Yeah. Burned. yeah, for sure. Yeah, you'll never work at a Denny's. Oh no, now. for Darn. sure. Like absolutely. I told that story like a week later, and I knew that De- like Denny stopped reaching out to me after that. So <laughs> it's clear what happened in there. Oh but, man. Um, well, well, going going back to the the potential of stories to be told right. for uh, after Solo. Hmm. We were just talking about this yesterday, I think, uh, when we were walking our dog, and I was like can you imagine the potential of showing the very first meeting of a Han Solo and Jabba? Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Like that would be such a cool moment for them Mm -hmm. to show. Well, there's, there's that like, and and they had a good working relationship for a while. It seems, uh, I was actually listening to, uh, our friends at the four center podcast and they were talking about this news. Uh, and Joseph mentioned the line of, kid I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other seen a lot of strange things like that right there is just yeah there there's your series Han goes on a wacky right. adventure with you <laughs> right. every episode yeah. and right it, it has a lot of flexibility because it like if Amelia Clark doesn't want to come back it's a shame but like you can do this other thing with Han and Chewie or if Alden didn't want to come back it sounds like he does you could do Amelia and Maul and, and like you can focus on a variety of different things here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we've teased this on the show the past couple of weeks, but uh, there is a... Oh, before, sorry, Corey, before you do that, we've teased this on every show except ours. We've been on oh, like three really? podcasts. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead. Oh, go. we haven't said it here yet. Oh, okay, yeah. So from what we've heard, there is a character in Solo that is going to get their own series, and it's in development right now. Um, yeah. So... I, I'm assuming that was supposed to be announced at Celebration. Uh, yeah. So I would expect that to be announced in like seven, eight business months from Lucasfilm. Uh, we'll see. When. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's exciting because like Lucasfilm is very much aware of the demand uh, of, of a solo sequel, um, but also 
they desperately want to bring somebody back. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's which, gonna be which, a good time. The person we'll, we will we will report it and do a whole thing whenever we can. But like the the character, it's like personally, I'm like okay, but I want. I want bigger, you know, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about it when, later, whenever we can. It's the same kind of thing with Cassie, and and it's I don't know. You you hear, and I don't. I have no idea who you're talking about. It's but it's like, Rally Keeley, isn't it? Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Clint yeah. Howard has come yeah. from that. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> so, like, you you hear? Okay, they're doing a Cassian story, and your reaction is like, okay, interesting choice. But like, I had the same reaction when they said we're doing an Afro comic. And at first I was like, that seems like an odd choice. But then like you think about what it actually means, what kind of person she is, how she can be like this avenue. And so looking into ancient Star Wars history because she's an archaeologist and like, I don't know, my my gut reaction to any like, we're doing a Java series is always going to be like, huh. Right. But if you dig into it a little bit, there's usually more substance to be found. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Noah, should we just drop it? Right drop now, it like it's hot. Yeah, drop it like it's hot. It? Should we? Should we? What do you think? Was I was I right? Yeah, no, no you're yes, 100. So, yeah, there it is. I mean, Corey, you, you just pulled the scoop out from under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Corey. I mean, if you want, you you you're gonna say it though, because if something happens with that actor and he's like not doing it, and we're and everyone and Reddit's fault. mad at us, it's your fault. Okay, it's, it's my <laughs> fault. you can always say it and cut it later. That's true. That's true. That's true. true. That's true. Yeah, so we've heard that Donald Glover is coming back as Lando really? in his Ooh. own series. Wow, that is yeah. not who I would have ever guessed. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was thinking maybe Beckett or something, but uh, yeah. no, yeah, that it's... is like honestly, last person I would have guessed. Well, yeah, guessed. yeah, it's, well, it's pretty that's surprising. The, that's the thing, and that's why we've kind of been hesitant because Donald Donald is down, but also Donald Glover is very busy. Yeah. He's yeah. Thomas Gambino and, and all this stuff. And also, so they were kind of trying to work. They had to work with them. And, and whenever we say this all the time, it's a joke on our show, but that Brinks truck that they dumped on Donald Glover's lawn to do this show was huge. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, there it is. Cats out of the bag, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, I guess we'll yeah. say this too, whatever. There was a, uh, <laughs> and the thing is, I don't think well, this is going to well, happen. We, well, we can't say this next part. Well, well, I don't think. Yeah, we can cut this out if we need to. But. Well, we'll we'll tell Alex and Molly off air the rest yeah, of this. Hey, what do you think? Yeah. What do you? Think and then I'm we'll make a say? video about it. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> what, right. Do think, what do you think I'm going to say? All Corey? of a sudden, uh, we cover rumors and scoops. I, I, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Oh, I'm not saying. Were you thinking about? Mm-hmm. What, That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Wait, no, are you thinking about like sequel trilogy? Yes. No, I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. I was going to throw out the idea of uh, that that was floating around Lucasfilm that they're going to make a series about Janna and Lando post Rise of Skywalker um, which I would like to see Naomi Aki again but mm-hmm. I don't think Billy D. Williams can oh, I really like in Rise of Skywalker he was there for sure but you know like I don't think he would be able to like start his own series at this time it's just so I don't know I, I don't think that's going to happen that's why we're not reporting that but that was definitely an idea they were talking about because they love Lando they want Lando mm-hmm. like to be uh, back in the spotlight. So, but yeah, I guess that's out of the bag. Donald Glover. Well, so, so one thing about a Donald Glover uh, Lando series for me personally, I I would love to see L three back. I, yes. I I know a lot yeah. of people had mixed feelings about uh, her, but I loved L three. I had yeah. really considered that this could be like it could be called the Calrissian Chronicles. Right. Uh, oh like, yeah, for sure. Not a sequel because I was yeah. gonna say. It's funny, like we're going to record our own stuff about all the Alden Ehrenreich stuff. And I was going to say that this is like practice for our own video. Um, <laughs> so for Donald Glover and Lando, if he were in like a solo sequel series, there's something that happened in Legends that kind of bugged me is that no one knew when the last like Han Lando meetup would happen. But they mm-hmm. did know that the last time they met up, Han pissed Lando off. Yeah, and so every story they're like, "Well, this could be the last time they met." So Han <laughs> right. just keeps burning Lando. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then Lando comes back in another story, and it's like, "Okay, we're working together again. Yeah. I'm trusting you." And then right. he burns him again. So like, right. Every time Lando shows up, I don't want it to be another like. And they already kind of. Uh, I, I think there's already reason enough for Lando to be mad. Oh yeah. The, the door is open for more to happen. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just don't want it to be like every single episode <laughs> right. Lever appears. Right. Because right. like... you got to think at some point Lando's like, I'm going to stop hanging out with that guy. Right. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he's not just going to keep going. So, um, and yeah, and, and the Calrissian Chronicles thing is actually, it is what I was thinking about too. It's, I think that is, I think oh, oh, this is pure speculation, but I think there's a good chance that that series will be called the Calrissian Chronicles it, and perfect. it'll be him and L3. <laughs> and like, it's like, I think it'd be cool if it's just an anthology series where like every episode, they're just on some wacky adventure. They run mm-hmm. into Clint Howard. I'd love to see Clint back. Let's get the ice cream <laughs> man back. You know what I mean? Like, and so there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, opportunities for them to, for that series. So uh, yeah, Lando. Dude, I want to see what happened with our singing Beckett. Mm-hmm, yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. I really want to see that. It was the think... fall that killed her, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I I don't think that's gonna. I don't think. I mean, maybe in like a comic, but yeah, yeah. That's look, more like... but getting... we could see why Lando was glad that she was killed. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... We could see that oh, business man. on Felicia. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes, yeah. I'd be so down. He already talked about two of his legends adventures in the movie, so like they could adapt old legend stories. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. and. There's a lot of world building and solo oh, yeah. and little things like that that I think would. Yeah. Now, I you know getting Donald Glover back is one thing, but getting Woody Harrelson back would be oh uh, that that's what I would be like whoa because Woody Harrelson, man that guy I love Woody and also he's high all the time, <laughs> he, uh, he just wants to chill and so he's like nah that Star Wars thing that made a hundred million dollars no I'm not gonna do that again so I think I would love that though so but I'm excited to see Lando back I really am. Hmm. I agree. All right, guys. Well, that's it. We ended that show on a bomb. I was not wow. expecting to drop that. So uh, Love that's it. awesome. I guess Reddit will be yelling at us in a few hours. Oh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, all right, Alex, Molly, thank you all so much for coming on. It's been fun. Thank, yeah, totally. thank you for having uh, thank, us. Thanks yeah. for the, the bombs dropped. <laughs> I know. You got it. You got it. Just for you guys. <laughs> and uh, just plug your stuff. Uh, where can they follow you on YouTube and Twitter and all, all those places? Yeah, uh, we're on YouTube, Star Wars Explained. We do daily Star Wars videos about lore, new stories, and so on. Yeah, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Molly Damon. Pretty awesome. much talking about the same stuff. <laughs> right, this is perfect timing. Our dog is trying to scratch his way into the office right now. <laughs> um, all right, well, Corey, where can they follow you? Yeah, you can Twitter, follow so. me at Corey underscore Wolfpack as well as at KR Transmissions here on Kessel Run Transmissions. Uh, me and Noah are currently running a contest we have a couple black series figures we're giving away, like the new Rebels line. We've got Zeb and Ezra. By the time that this is out, I'm sure everyone has already seen that. So make sure to go to our Twitter pages so you can find out how to enter and uh, all that fun stuff. Yep. And you can follow me on Twitter at Outlaw Noah and on Instagram at the Outlaw Noah. And uh, other than that, guys, thank y'all so much for watching, and we'll see you later. <laughs>